It's racing's biggest day when you start in Monaco and you stop in Indianapolis and then wrap up in Charlotte with the 600. And in Monaco, it was from the Netherlands. Max von Stappen, excuse me, he led every lap and dominated to get the victory. Yeah, thankfully it rained there, Tony. Got a little exciting there at the end. Had those drivers up on the wheel. Yeah, it was definitely was the most exciting part of it. As soon as it started raining, they had to make adjustments, waiting to see whether they need to rain tires or not. And at the Indianapolis 500, it's set to dive in. That's Kyle Kirkwood flipping it. A scary wreck went flying. He walked away and was okay. But at the end, it would be Joseph Newgarden to pass Marcus Erickson to win on the last lap. And he is your Indy 500 winner. You ran both of those. The only guy to go 1,100 miles in, in one day. How special? How fast? You said you were going what? How fast did when you went at Indy? Uh, the the fastest I ever went at Indy was 237 in rookie orientation my first year. But 237? Who's counting 237 <laughs> mile an hour? And we had twice the horsepower these guys have, and they're running in the 230s qualifying. These guys that drive, these men and women that drive at Indy now with the small wings and how free they have to have the cars, they are one hell of a, a set of race car drivers that go up there and put those things uh, around the two-and-a-half-mile oval. And Kyle Larson is going to do it uh, next year. Postponed the... Coca-Cola 600 until tomorrow at 3 o'clock on Fox. So, And the Xfinity race will now be at 11 a.m. FS1 will carry that. So what a great Memorial Day doubleheader after the great day of racing today. Xfinity, 11 a.m. on FS1, 3 o'clock on Fox for the 600. This is the greatest day of my life. Man, I love you guys. Oh, God, I love you guys. My biggest thing when I came to NASCAR is I, I just wanted to be recognized as a quality driver. You know, my background followed his a lot with dirt racing and racing in a lot of the same tracks. I remember watching these videos of him before he ever made it. So he, he just made me a fan of his from you know when I was very early in my life. Cup owners never thought about hiring somebody as young as Jeff to drive a cup car. You know, here is this young kid, didn't really fit the mold of a, of a NASCAR driver. I had a different background in racing, more open wheel, and was excited to be there. 94 was, was the year that I think everything just started to kind of gel and come together. And, and Charlotte was always one of my favorite tracks from the first time I came to NASCAR. The Coke 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway it's always such a special race. It's the longest race we run by 100 miles. But as we got into the nighttime, it's like that 24 car, Ray Everham, they made the right adjustments. Jeff, Jeff, two tires, Jeff, two tires, two tires. Hold up, let's try to no, work. I don't, I don't think that'll work. Temperatures had cooled down, and so it actually didn't even hurt us that bad on lap time. So the car st stuck really good, felt really good. I think right here, it's just about navigating through traffic because there were some slower cars that I was coming up on. I think it was really when I was taking the white flag that I just had to, to really contain myself and not get too caught up in it. But certainly by the time I came off at turn four, the emotions just went to another level. Checkers are out and they are down. They did. Earnhardt, up to yeah. congratulate him. You know, when, when Dale Earnhardt comes up and gives his thumbs up and approval, then, you know, to me, I looked up to these drivers, to this series as the ultimate goal. And here I was pulling into victory lane and winning my very first cup race. Man, I mean, this is the greatest day of my life. Those are, those are not tears of sorrow. Those are tears of joy. And I think, too, when you show emotion like that, Fans love it. You, you relate more to a normal person. It's like this journey that you've been on since you were a young kid and the people that have been there supporting you along the way, like it all just comes out all at once. And certainly that's, that's what this moment was you know, all about for me. We had no control over and we just kept working hard and working hard. I certainly didn't recognize that on this day that I was changing the sport. It was maybe a few years later I realized that me and others that were coming along, that were bringing something new and different, were building the sport up to go to a whole nother level. I looked at other race car drivers, you know, whether it was A.J. Foyt or whether it was Richard Petty or Dale Earnhardt, 
and you always wonder, well, what's it like? What's it like to be in their shoes? Rick Hendrick, Ray Evernham, my mom and dad, NASCAR. I mean, they all gave me that opportunity to go do that. I got to live it. I got to live the, the, the dream as a race car driver. You know, looking back on it, it's really puts a smile on my face and, and uh, just makes me realize that this was just the very beginning of something really, really special. If you hear some of the noise in the background, they're uh, detonating some of the military uh, explosives that they had planned for the pre-race ceremony. And there'll be more uh, tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern, although they're going to hustle to get the race in when you see it on Fox. Dang, when we Tony, actually run. I wish they'd let us. The six of Help them with not, that. They don't want you anywhere they, near that. They don't Clint. want the two of us over there <laughs> even remotely close to that right That's, now. We need to go over buddy up I, again for I tomorrow. I think they started that because they didn't want to hear us talking anymore. <laughs>
most of all drivers and his first at Charlotte. William Byron started from the pole and wins stage one. What do you think, you know, a lot of vibrant colors out here. What do you think old Kenny Powers, what was his, what would that car look like out in this race? Track? I think it'd be leopard skin. Yeah, oh yeah. Some fluorescent greens, maybe some go. fluorescent yellows, you know. Maybe he'd strap a mullet to the back of it, you know. <laughs> and tendrils of hair would fly off the back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh Cindric's been in the wall. Yep. I actually got on there and put looked at those questions myself. Whoever wins that one, they're going to earn their money this year, uh, this week. Ooh, Went into it pretty hard, ahead. Tony. And he's been flirting with the wall all day. Umpteenth time this weekend. Now the Xfinity race, the Allsco 300, was started this morning at 11 a.m. after getting rained out Saturday, and they got through stage one and into stage two uh, when rain came and. NASCAR began track drying to start this race, the 600. So the Xfinity race will air later today after the conclusion of the now, During the red flag, there was a, an incident, some pushing and shoving between Bubba Wallace and Eric Almarola about something that had happened out on the track. And when push came Boom. to shove, the NASCAR security uh, was right there to prevent how Anything is it further. always that guy? It's well, always that guy breaking things up. He look at do 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 do. This guy's oh whoa whoa whoa. He's the one that had uh, um, who do you have in a headlock in Kansas? Wasn't it Kansas? Noah Gregson. Yeah yeah yeah. Man, that guy's always seemed to be. It just just to give to him a little what, bit more time. I would also, love to know what it was though, because that's that's if you get yeah. Eric Amarillo that mad, something big's happened. So let's see who Jimmy gets together with here. Uh -huh. His teammate. Noah Gregson right yep. there on the outside got is trying to get to his outside. Jimmy came up. They get into one another. I don't know. Don't think Jimmy knew he was there. That camp has had a rough day today. Absolutely. Johnson down 49 Gregson 55 and Eric Jones back on track but 59 laps down after uh, some debris came up and punctured both Gregson and Jones radiators. They got the cars fixed and back. all with fresher tires than the cars they're racing. Oh, they're oh in trouble! It. Kyle Busch around. Kyle Busch gets tagged. Oh, get get in a, he got into Keselowski on that outside. Washed up right at the last Come minute. Back, I was up. just fixing to say that group of cars right there were really getting after it. Kyle Busch is around backwards. Unbelievable. Still going backwards, Tony. I was seventh at the time and in a pretty tight pack of cars there. <laughs> what is he doing? He might back he's, what, in what he's doing. He's doing a great job at it. But so why get, is he doing it? Get caught up. Got to spin around and get caught up. Going to need to get caught up to go a lap down. Find here. a flat spot so you don't. Well, his tires are all up. So I. I... There, there he goes. Go. Wow. So he wants to try to stay on the lead lap here uh, get, and get to pit road. Now here's a look at it. It's going to be behind these cars. It's like it got loose, starts chasing it up the racetrack, gets in the side of Keselowski. Make note, Keselowski hit that outside wall pretty hard as well. That whole group right there, that was kind of that back half of the top five that stayed out and the new tires coming on. See, Brad smoked the wall on the outside as well. Really lucky everybody missed him, Tony. Yeah, you don't normally get that lucky here. Now, normally. both Keselowski and Bush were on newer tires. Yeah, but they were right up. They were approaching what I was talking about. They were approaching that back half of the top five and is having trouble. Those guys were kind of holding them up and stacking that group up. There were four or five cars right there just in a big pile. So we'll look to see if either Suarez or Keselowski has damage from this. Hard in the wall goes Hamlin Chase and Elliott Chase Elliott. Elliott. Hard That's, impact for Denny Hamlin. That was a savage crash right at the start finish line. Seventh caution flag. Lap 186. 
And the window net is down as the AMR safety crew quickly on the scene, dropping the window net. Uh, as we saw yesterday in the Indy 500, raising the visor. That's their driver's signal to the safety crew that the driver's okay. Hamlin dropped the net. He is all right. That's big time impact there. Last year's winner, the Coke 600. Left of your screen. The inside of Chase. Gets loose. You see him lift out of the gas. The flames crowded Chase, got into him. But they saw Ooh. some retaliation Man. there. Or did Keslowski get into the left rear corner of Elliott there? I saw Elliott. Tried to you check see up. Elliott lose his nose and lift out of the gas. Flames come out of the pipes, yep. chase it up, squeeze Chase into the wall, and I think uh, the rest is self-explanatory. Well. You never know, no. As hard as he hit, you know, you start bending them toe links and things like that to throw these cars around. Watch the flame. See, lift out of the gas. That means his car is heading up the racetrack. Come up. That's a retaliation. That's which isn't a great move when you're trying to gain points and get yourself back in the playoffs. Yeah, but he got squeezed in the wall pretty hard. There's a lot of frustration there on both sides. Let's ride with Hamlin. You hear him trying to. Bump, 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 trying to stay out of it. Tell all sign when somebody's on the bottom and some flames coming out of the pipes. That's something I love about this new car. You see that, you know a car's in trouble. there and you know once you tear the right sides off these things it's kind of over so just uh, I hate it I thought our Napa Chevy was was getting better uh, it was nice to be making some gains there again throughout the race our pit stops are really good uh, and we had some pretty good fortune to get to get up towards the front there so it was just uh, yeah, it was just trying to get to mile 600 and, and have a shot so unfortunately I failed to do that again Denny said there was some retaliation there. Was there any retaliation on your part? No, uh, well, you know, what, like I say, once you hit the wall on these things, you can't drive them anymore. So, unfortunately, not. Nah, no, just uh, an unfortunate circumstance. Byron and Chastain back up into the top ten there on fresh tires. It'll be Busher and Harvick Keselowski. Spin on the front stretch. We got a caution. BJ McLeod's wrecked. Stopped in the front straightaway and will finish the stage under caution. Chris Busher will get his first stage win since 2021. Denny, what happened there between you and Chase Elliott? I got right rear hooked in the middle straightaway. Did you think there was any kind of retaliation there, or what, what was the deal? What led to that? Yeah, it's a tantrum, and he shouldn't be racing next week. Right rear hooks are absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> I don't care. It's same thing Bubba Wallace did with, with Kyle Larson. The exact same. He shouldn't be racing. It's a tantrum. Thanks, Eddie. Seconds off the lead. Oh, oh no! Now. Bail! Spins without contact, and we're under caution. Can you believe the way this day is going? <laughs> no. I if can't. I didn't watch this race from a year ago, no, I would say no. But this is exactly the way that race happened a year ago. Just gets out from underneath him. So he was fifth. Goes for a long slide through the. Roval chicane and then gets it right in. Wow. Something he had been doing before that we saw earlier in the race, he'd run into turn three all the way up on the wall and about halfway through the corner, he'd start bringing it down about a half a car length. And I didn't see him do it that time. I don't know if 
he had been working up higher the last half of the corner? Or yeah, what? definitely diamonding off of the center. What happened there, Steve? I don't know. I mean, I told him outside. He got outside of us in the straightaway. We just somehow got sideways and, and uh, hit him. But. So he was Brad Keselowski, and there is oh, the contact oh. as Keselowski came off the corner and loose. very loose. Yeah, Brad got loose. Take it, Tony. Yeah, he, he, that's, uh, that wasn't the 51 crowd name. That's just the six car getting loose, and unfortunately, the, the right rear of the 51 was there. Now, 51 Man. is Todd Gilliland this week, and Steve was Steve Barkdahl, the spotter. I tell you what's moving is that they need some removal from the underpants of him. Man, unbelievable <laughs> save. How about that across the apron, across the turf, back onto the racetrack. My man, Tyler Reddick, pods. Big move of the race. Wow. Watch this in car right here, guys. Tony, you do not cross the wheel over like that and save it. Down on the apron. Unbelievable. And one lap later, up against the wall again. That's just four on the woo. All right, let's go get the club. Yeah, I need to change my underwear. Told you. I told you. I called it. He just pitted. It, it ain't down. It's gone. Uh, it, we can call it debris. The other name for it is wheel. Tires rolling down the back stretch here. No lug nut, just had pitted, didn't get that wheel on, obviously. There it is. Still has the stickers on it. Well, Larry, if you weren't ready to pit, you're pitting now. Oh, yeah, and what Tony Stewart said about five hours ago, no mistakes on this pit stop. St. Louis next week. That'll be fun. Fun racetrack. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to, uh, to getting out there in the Midwest with the boys do a lot of sparks flew last year think about chastain and hamlin cool racetrack well get ready because uh, michael waltrip will join us for the race and in stage two the irrepressible kenny wallace <laughs> will stop by god help you guys to offer his brand of wit and wisdom <laughs> so much fun so much energy yep and, and michael had a blast calling that race last year with him reddick slammed Hard. coming off turn number four hard by harvick who slides into the turf and straightens it out i guess Two. reddick and harvick collide coming off turn number four for the 13th caution of the day at lap 359. oh Front of, front of Harvick takes off to the right. The four definitely just ran up into the 45. Not intentionally, obviously, but we've seen that today where in that same area, guys on the top have been loose and the guys in the bottom have been really tight. Well, I think Mike said it best. You know, it's been days where this track's just not wide enough, and that is definitely a crunch zone. You run out of real estate when you're on the bottom. We've talked about it. Talked about it with Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin. If you lift in these cars today's day and age on these type of racetracks, you're going to get freight trained, and that's exactly what happened. Well, it seems like it's just hard to recover also. Like if the front end takes off, you can lift, and it doesn't just grab back like it used to. Oh, the round. I think that's Almendinger. Got loose underneath. Yeah, it is. Got loose underneath Logano. Harrison Burton and A.J. Almendinger bring out the 14th caution. See if Ricky Stenhouse gets in the back of Almendinger here. <laughs> yes. Well, on the third try. <laughs> yeah, bump, bump, bump. <laughs> I'm looking to see if they're going to give. I couldn't tell who was ahead, whether it was Larson or Truex is ahead of Larson. Look back here. You see Cinder get sideways. It's going to hit this inside wall hard with the nose. Well, he came Look right. at that thing give and flex. He came right across the front of Harrison Burton's car without touching it. Brad Kozlowski will get one of his two laps back on this caution. Not going to quite get clear here. Oh, Larson's around. 
In front of the field, this down is going to be big. Down. Take hold the break. Big pile of Logano, uh, Gibbs, Gibbs and more. Such a good run for Ty Gibbs. Who was in front here with the lead? I see Blaney in front of Byron, but I don't. It's going to be interesting. We'll have to go back to the last scoring loop they crossed prior to the moment of caution. Larson stays done. Right front suspension's broke. Oh, Logano limping in. Here's Larson. I'm sorry. I was plowing tight for the wheel, and then it didn't snap. Yeah, it's in for it. Doesn't look hurt too bad. I know you have a right front flat. Same thing we saw. Tony, you said it with Cindric. Front end took off, snapped loose. Away she went. For Bell there. Yeah, a lot of damage for Bell. All right. Watch Larson. There Blue it takes white. off. You can see him heading up the racetrack, and once it bit, came around in a hurry. There's Bell getting into him. Bell, Logano, Gibbs squeezed up to the wall. Aside from Larson, the biggest heartbreaker in that transaction was Ty Gibbs. That kid, I want to give him props today that kid has drove an incredible race super smart very patient didn't put himself in bad positions and this was one he just couldn't get away from unfortunately but that kid did an amazing job all day today yeah I mean you, you nailed it he's been solid he's done that all year Tony he's been solid each and every week doing everything he is logging the laps learning getting the experience getting the respect of the other drivers white flag in the air one lap to go sponsored by credit one bank you're so right, Mike. Good kid, good family. Hasn't been able to close the deal. Been 59 races since he's last vis visited Victory Lane. Such a fast race car driver. So and capable and finally getting it done right here. Bring it around here, boy. And Byron closing on this final lap to within eight tenths of a second. But off turn number yeah. four, the Coca-Cola 600 belongs to Ryan Blaney. That's a big one, Tony. And a big congratulations to Roger Penske yeah, winning Indy 500 and the Coke 600 in the same year. Amazing feat. It's his eighth oh, career victory. He last won at Daytona in August of 2021 and becomes the 10th driver to win in 2023. <laughs> Ryan's going to go capture the flag. And like his Penske teammate at Indy, he wants to go celebrate with the fans. Awesome. He always gives that flag to a, a young fan, too. There it is. See him hand it to that little kid. Yep. Good on you, Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney has waited a long 59 races, and tonight it's the crown jewel. You win the Coca-Cola 600. Ryan, how did you hold off the competition restart after restart to get it done? Oh, I mean, oh, look at that. I think they like you. This guy, I might shed a tear. Uh, man, this has uh, been a cool weekend. Obviously, obviously Memorial Day weekend means a lot. Uh, I'm growing up here watching Dad run this race for a long time, and um, it's so cool to just be a part of it let alone win it, and, and yeah, I just was able to get the lead on the restart, and then just kind of, my car was so good that I could kind of bide my time a little bit, and, and we were able to drive off, and I was hoping no caution, just because you never know. I know we had the car to do it, but um, restarts can be crazy, but I cannot thank Body Armor enough. It's awesome we have their Cherry Lime camo car here with Operation Homefront, Menards, Advanced Auto Parts, Worth, Ford, um, so many other partners that do so much for us, Dent, uh, Dent Wizard, and Dex imaging so you know you start to get to feel like you can't win anymore and uh but you don't win in a while and um kind of get hard so just super thankful to the 12 guys for believing in me and thank you guys for sticking around really appreciate it brian blaney completes the sweep for roger penske on memorial day weekend
It was Eric Almarola and Bubba Wallace. Now, this was caught from someone in the stands. A little push, a little shove. We talked to both of those guys post-race. Here's what they had to say. Yeah, we're just frustrated on, on you know, how we race each other in stage two of the Coke 600. So Early in the race, uh, I felt like I was giving Bubba a lot of room when we were racing around each other. And uh, when he got by me, he shot me the bird. So I just went to go ask him why he shot me the bird. And he started mouthing off and cussing at me. And I just, I told him I wasn't going to have that. So, um, yeah, disappointing. It's just, that's him. I, I, I know that.